let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> Coming in from Boston, Massachusetts, usually with a dog over her shoulder, we have Kristen Koska versus hailing in from Portland, Maine, and I don't see him, Andrew Williams, about to debate on a central topic, pun intended, of the following debate topic. Hopefully you all can see my screen as I ask that you vote on the following predate discussion. In order to efficiently and reliably generate robust real world evidence across multiple data sources, observational studies are best conducted as a distributed network analysis and not a centralized data repository. If you agree with this assertion, please say yes, affirmative, I agree. If you disagree with this assertion, say no, negative, I don't agree. And if you're on the offense, whoops, I don't know why my R session opened up. Um, if you are on the fence, I want you to suggest I don't know. And I give you 30 seconds to place your place your pre-debate statement. While we do, set the ground rules. Second verse, same as the first. Kristen, Andrew, keep it honest. Keep it keep it uh, keep it more PC or more uh, more uh, sensitive than Christian did there. Uh, if uh, you're going to get five minutes to make your initial statements, you'll then get a three minute counterpoint. And then Craig and I will choose questions to ask you before we will vote and see who won this debate. It looks like right now we've got 64% of the community in favor that distributed networks are, are the best way to generate reliable evidence. We've got 11% suggesting that uh, the centralized approach may work and 26% of the people are on the fence ready to go. So with that, um, let's see, uh, Kristen, you have the floor. How much time do I get? Infinity? <laughs> Start with that, five. Start with five. Well, I'd like to make a point for distributed networks. And I thought I'd start with my crazy wall here behind me to prove a point. You don't need everything all in one place to get an insight, but you might need a lot of strength and you might need a lot of people. In defense of the distributed network, we have a few obligations to uphold. Most specifically, patient privacy and data privacy. Keeping data where it lives is incredibly important for our commitment to doing our part to manage governance. And the more you move data, we know how challenging it gets. Plus, it's closer to curation. We know how tricky it can be to understand what ends up in the CDM and having a direct line to the team that performed that ETL if they exist or if their memory has been dumped into documentation is often preferred. We have a lot of questions we ask and there's a continuous feedback loop. So this is unavoidable in either model, but I do believe li living it closer means less of an infrastructure to demand to be able to update your ETL and to accommodate changes. But I really wanna hit home with a point that is quite important to me, which is world domination. I believe that world domination should be one of our objectives forever until the end of time, because reproducing our evidence should be able to stand the test of wherever we are, in the world, or if you're on Mars, I don't care. Your distributed network should have an, the mechanism to be able to reproduce our science as we go. And therefore, I think it's important that data lives where it is, that we keep it where, it where it's supposed to be. Do we have problems with sample sizes? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. Can it be tough to preserve the freshness? Absolutely, this will happen to both of us. And of course, we're always gonna be scrutinizing data quality. So while this could be an, a debate about who can see data quality best, I want you to think about the inherent nature of how much we've gotten done in the last year plus since we started. By building frameworks like Charybdis and Scylla, we've answered critical questions and generated evidence. And I think Albert's paper and the, the papers that Talita and Elena and Martina have, have led show us that we can generate high quality evidence 
that is really moving the needle and the discussion across a number of therapeutic areas, even within a hot topic. So while I respect my colleague and his desire for centralization, and I might even be infiltrated on that team and spend a lot of time hanging out, I think there's something to be said about keeping data where it lives and that we have a lot more power in learning how to work without moving information around because ultimately our patients deserve that we uphold their privacy. And I think that should be the thing that we, we take to heart. That's why we have a person-centric model and we keep it very lean. So I'm actually not going to take my whole five minutes because I want to hear what my colleague has to say about my challenges. And I look forward to our lively debate. Thank you, Kristen. Andrew Williams, you have the floor. Five minutes. Go. So thank you very much, Kristen. This is uh, this is going to be a lively debate. I, I think as, as dear as Odyssey is to my heart, there's some pretty obvious points to be made in favor of a centralized resource. Um, and, you know, the, I'm going to direct our attention back to how this the statement was made. And it's uh, it's saying what's best conducted uh, and it's using best in terms of efficiency and then reliability and robu robustness of evidence. Those are the ways in which we're, we're being asked to define what, what is best here. And between those two kinds of criteria, we really, I think most of the people on the call, maybe all, would, would pick reliability and robustness evidence over efficiency um, if we had to choose between an answer to a, an important healthcare question, research question that is uh, is more accurate versus one that is more efficient, we'd, we'd choose the more accurate result. Um, and we do that all the way up until some threshold where the timeliness of that result really impacts how useful it is in, in improving healthcare uh, and, and health, health outcomes. Um, and I think with respect to reliability and robustness, it's a very clear advantage for pooled data. We really only use federated research strategies as ingenious and valuable and wonderful as they are in a practical sense because there are those privacy issues that you highlighted, Kristen. And um, and there's ingenious work, some work being led by Yang Chen and Martine and others on recovering the kind of estimates you would get if you had pooled data, but uh, and, and other kinds of research on distributed computation and so on. And, and that's all great work and should be advanced. But in all cases, those methods are using uh, the pooled data as the source of truth to really understand how good they are. So with respect to really how robust a result is, it's hard to envision a, a case where we're, we're really going to prefer a distributed data setting versus a pooled data setting or a centralized data setting. And there are really stark efficiency advantages as well. Um, once all of the data are in a pooled setting, for example, in the National COVID Cohort Collaborative, you and I both work, Kristen, um, there's over 50 sites data already there and harmonized to the OMOP common data model ready to be used by, by Odyssey tools. Um, and the uh, efficiency of having all 50 sites ready to go is, is, is stark, right? Having, being able to do that uh, all at once, once all those data are in and the hard work of getting them there is, is done. Is, uh, is much easier than getting 50 separate sites to each run an analysis and contribute to a pooled setting. And I think we know that from our, from our Odyssey community. As, as fast and rapid as it is, it's, it's also, it can take time for a number of sites. And getting 50 institutions to all contribute, as has happened already in, in this one case, um, is an example of the kinds of efficiency gains you could get from doing that. Um, but so I think you know, the, this question is is posed in a way, the statement is posed in a way like what's best in principle rather than what's best for the Odyssey community. I think there are these real practical considerations that you brought up about patient privacy and, and institutional reserve. But I think the cases like N3C show that that's a bit of a, a historically varying situation that with the right motivations, governments and healthcare institutions and other stakeholders can decide to pool their data. And then there are a lot of advantages, practical advantages that can be done, some of which you alluded to. So you can centralize analysis of conformance to the OMOP CDM for Odyssey case. Um, you can more efficiently compare sites data to benchmarks based on pool data. And you can standardize the whole process of giving feedback and assistance to sites regarding their data quality and data development 
issues. And that's a real advantage. A lot of sites don't have the expertise. So having that centralized help that takes a little bit of the burden off the local sites, you still definitely need their input to understand the data and, and do that work well. But it's uh, it's really, there's some strategic advantages to staffing up a whole research network that way, where you've got some centralized expertise that helps each of the local sites that are worth, uh, that have important practical consequences. And, you know, I think just to drive home the point, if we could imagine in the most extreme case, uh, if all the world's data were in a centralized resource and already been harmonized and so on, would we prefer to have it keep it separately for reasons other than privacy? Because we didn't really stipulate privacy and in, in what's best. You know, if, if this question or statement had been posed and what's best for preserving patient privacy, we might have had different results. So that can certainly be achieved in, in centralized settings. It's um, Thank you, Andrew. Your time has passed. Now that you've heard the opening statements, Kristen, do you have a three minute counter argument now? Do I ever? Wait, can you see I've joined Andrew's side? I am in his office with him now to make my counterpoint. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I, I might have taken some creative liberties on interpretation of the question. Isn't that the fun of semantics in our community? I, I want to kind of uh, hark back to sustainability and what is realistic. And I think centralized data repositories have a great utility, but they themselves require a lot of infrastructure investment and piggy banks. And we are fortunate that some programs have existed, but we've seen this, this show before. If it was in syndication, it might be on, you know, it's second cast, they'd be all grown up and it'd be the other time. We know that centralized investment can be fleeting and it can really cripple the science if we change change our way. This is not to say that distributed networks don't have their own investment, but it's much smaller pots of money or there are lots of ways we can enable each other through our, our crowd. And so if we think about what's best for sustainability, there is something to be said about allowing these institutions to harvest and stay evergreen. Now, there are a lot of things that we need to do that we're not gonna touch as issues to help people get over the hump and make their federated, you know, um, environments the best they can be. But that's the beauty of the collaborative is that we've been pulling each other up for many years. We've seen a ton of advancement. If you ask Mark Cater what the OMOP Lab 1.0 look like and what we're doing today, we've come a long way in how we think about this technologically speaking. So I think the federated model has a lot of utility. I think the methods challenges are a challenge we should try to address head on. Now we have some issues with our overlap in our databases that doesn't get solved by this problem, but we have so much work we could be doing to use smaller samples and to be able to run these types of analysis. That should be a challenge we should welcome with open arms because more data is not necessarily more data and heterogeneous data landed in the same place, conformed to the same convention, but coming from different models comes with its own issues. So I respectfully still stand in belief that Federated models are quite great. And this basement's awesome, Andrew. How do you get all this work done down here? Thank you, Kristen. Andrew, three minute counter argument. <laughs> that is so funny that you have my background there. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I wanna thank you, Kristen, not only for that, for honoring my, my basement uh, in your response, but also for making, uh, in passing twice, a very important point that I didn't include in my comments. And one of the, it's really the small sample issues. So I think the federated model, it's really, it's hard for a lot of Odyssey studies. You know, you you run it at your site. And I said, you know, the study won't even run in, in a lot of cases because your your site doesn't have enough outcomes or whatever it is. You can't get a, you can't get an estimate to pool with the other sites in the federated network and for lots and lots and lots of questions that is uh, a real obstacle and you essentially end up throwing the entire site's data away as a result of that so it's something i should have included in my comments and i thank you Kristen, for mentioning it twice in yours because it really is uh, an important an important consideration um i think you know the the practical consequences of of having to work in a federated setting are the the mother of odyssey's invention right and it's it would be horrifying to me personally 
to cast aspersions on them in any way. The amount of ingenuity that has gone into designing our network's system and the way the infrastructure works is um, absolutely uh, an inspiration to me on a, on a regular basis. But I think it's just this practical consideration and it may go away. I think the the ability to maintain some centralized resource is not far-fetched. The New York, the stock exchanges of the world decided to centralize how data was collected and used and made publicly available for a common purpose for you know 100 years. They're still going. They're hundreds of years. I think they're the the ability of all the stakeholders to kind of say we should centralize this and make sure it's all open and transparent for the public good is uh, quite quite plausible and may may come to pass and could be sustainable if it were. So that was my main response to your question about or your point about the sustainability of this. It's there's nothing in principle that prevents us from doing this in a sustained and continuously improved way. Um, and I think you know as you admitted the the points about being close to home aren't really any more applicable to the federated setting than they are to the distributed setting. In some ways, you're really enabling the folks close to home to answer the data curation and, and development questions better by having a centralized resource than by leaving them on their own. So I think that that point is easily met as well. As able a debater as you are, I feel confident in my rebuttal. Very good. You now are each going to get one question and a one minute response. Kristen, Andrew made the uh, uh, statement that when comparing federated models to a centralized resource, the centralized resource is the gold standard. Uh, if that's the case, then that would mean that it's the best thing and you are just producing some sort of approximate. How do you respond to that? How do we know what is best? Who says best is best? I might be the best. Andrew might be the best. Mark might be the best. I think that the idea of a gold standard is in itself a paradigm we need to challenge because we routinely run up against this idea of gold standards built in very specific ways. And so it's our luxury being a diverse community, having such heterogeneous information that we can develop new gold standards and we can challenge and we can describe our data in ways that we never thought were possible. So I would challenge that gold standards are made to become platinum standards or something newer. Mint the coin, right? Like you can mint your own coins. We should mint a standard that makes sense for the new new. And so I would argue what's, what's to be said about the research minds here that we couldn't do that and we couldn't do it well. In fact, that's the future. That's the room you wanna be in. That's what I would encourage us to be thinking about. Andrew, your question for a one minute response. Uh, in the context of bringing different data together, heterogeneity is not actually our friend. It, it's our friend, not our enemy. Um, putting everything in a central database suggests that we can mix these data, um, but we should keep the data close to the data custodians who know their data best and interpret the data well. Uh, this isn't just solved by having a data standard like the OMOP common data model. Uh, so how how do you how do you respond to the notion of heterogeneity and the distortion of that in a centralized model? I I think a centralized model does not preclude understanding that heterogeneity. In fact, enhances it. One of the things that you get when you put data into a, a centralized repository is its provenance in all the different sites, and I think uh, that allows you to really examine a lot of important methodological questions that apply to the federated setting, and I, and I hope there's going to be more and more research that's exactly doing that. So a lot of the methods, as I, I alluded to, some really cool and important work Yong Chang and Martin and others are doing to kind of recover what you would get from a pooled result in, an, in, uh, in a federated setting, and I think that centralized resource is the ideal place to do that because you have all the needed information. And as far as closeness to the real data again you're you're really expecting a lot from each site and there aren't that there aren't hundreds and hundreds of sites out there that have that kind of uh, uh, that resources so centralizing it and giving the people who are close to the data the support they need is uh, is better done in a centralized setting and no matter all right that is all Andrew and with that, I will ask that everybody cast one last vote at pollev.com slash Patrick Ryan 800. Same link as before. I'm going to pull up the screen. 
if you come on, come on. If you uh, if you support Kristen in the notion that uh, observational studies are best conducted as a distributed data network, please vote yes. Affirmative. I agree. If you have been swayed by Andrew Williams arguments uh, towards a centralized data repository, please vote no negative. I don't agree. Please cast your votes now while looking at Kristen staring longingly into the eyes of Martin Schumi. I know we're running long, but I want to make sure we get these votes so that we can indeed declare a winner. We're going to give 30 more seconds. And this is actually a very tight one, so I'm going to have to actually do some math here. All right, 74. All right, I'm going to count down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. Our initial vote was 60, 64% were in favor, now 74% in favor. So Kristen gained an extra 10. But those opposed started at 11% and is now up to 26%. So the, 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 the winner of debate number two is Andrew Williams. Congratulations, Andrew. Thank, I want to thank Kristen, Andrew, Peter, Christian for being good sports in our inaugural debate. Thank you everybody who participated in the channel and the discussion. Of course, these are topics that are central to the uh, community and these are conversations that shouldn't stop uh, now, but actually represent opportunities for us all to be thinking deeply about how we can collaborate to generate more reliable evidence. But thank you all for engaging in this fun session. Uh, and I look forward to uh, collaborating with all of you moving forward. Craig, I'll hand it back Thank to you. you. Yep. Thanks everybody for joining. Prostate Cancer Study Thon report next week. Hope to see you all there. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you.